name is Shalini. I'm a D4 at Roseman University in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. So I did my undergrad at McMaster University, which is in Hamilton, Ontario, and I did it in Honors Life Sciences, and I ended up doing a thesis at the end of the program. I was a residential advisor for three years, and I also volunteered and worked with the clubs around the school during my free times. And overall, I was just really interested in photography, dance, and arts, and anything creative. So I worked as a freelance photographer and a dancer for a bit. Um, these were kind of the experiences that, that made me realize that I wanted to do something with my hands, I wanted to be creative, um, and I wanted to be my own boss. Um, that's kind of what led me into dentistry or choosing dentistry in the future. So going into undergrad, I knew that I wanted to do something in the sciences, but I had no idea what. And it was a bit of a rebel where I didn't want to do med school just because of something that was expected of me by my parents. And so I just took courses that I did well in naturally because I enjoyed them and I had fun learning for the sake of learning. And by the end of second, third year, I, it caught up to me where I had to make a choice. So I kind of shadowed a lot of um, dentists and physiotherapists and a couple of medical professions. And dentistry really stood out to me just because of all the procedures involved, the tools, the arts and crafts that go into it. Um, that kind of drew me towards it just because I'm a creative person by nature. And I also really like the specialties coming out of dental school. I like the fact that you can choose 12 different specialties or you can go straight into work. So whatever I choose in the future, I was covered. So I really like that aspect of it. And those were the reasons why I chose to pursue dentistry. So the Canadian DAT is quite different from the American DAT, but you can use this course to apply to American schools. And it's offered at the worst times during the year when I took it twice a year during midterm season. And it always took the back seat for me when I was studying. I did it more than once and my midterms were top priority. Um, but I would suggest planning ahead of time and studying for the DAT months in advance, even though you might forget things, it's better to just know that and then kind of freshen up right before you take the dad. Um, I studied through Kaplan Blue Book, uh, Feralis Biology Notes, Chad's videos, and the DAT Crusher for practice. I also use the CDA um, booklets and study guides for additional practice. And just having a variety of different uh, sources kind of helped me feel more confident no matter what kind of questions I get on the day of the death. Um, it's really important to do your research when you apply to schools or when you're going for interviews about what the school's mission statement is, because I think what sets people apart is if the school thinks you're a good fit for them. So for example, in Roseman, um, team players and people who are really flexible, or people who are willing to go with the change, um, are somebody that stands out during interview process and on the application. So if you're able to show that you have a lot of leadership, team leadership, or like team team-based activities on your resume, I think that stands out on your application. And then on your interview day, if you're somebody that's willing to let others speak, do not interrupt, or if people, if you're letting to like let everybody have a say and have a just a good presence in a team, and you're not somebody that's just willing to get your self-recognition, I think they take notice of that, I think. So things like that really kind of let them choose who they want to accept and who they don't want. Our interview was about eight hours long, which is, yes, one on the longer end of things, um, which included kind of the orientation um, and then just discussions about the school, the fee structure and things like that. But what was interesting to me is I noticed that people were, there were faculty that was kind of taking notice of people's behavior throughout the whole day, not just when they were actually being interviewed one-on-one. -on -one. So we also had little group activities or they gave us a little scenario where we had to, there was a crisis and we had to solve it as a, as a team just little scenarios here and there. And then we also had the one-on-one -on -one interview. Um, so it was really important to kind of be on your best behavior. Um, and they were kind of noticing people that would go on their phone and just, just acting unprofessionally. And when you're in the team, like the group setting, if you're somebody that's just interrupting everybody constantly and only trying to say what you have to say. Um, so I think things like that was also part of the interview, which a lot of people don't notice. Uh, so when you see these interviews that are really long, don't be fooled because they are watching. Um, but for the better, I think they want to choose people that are genuinely good in all times of the day, not just when they have to be or when they have to be behaved or good. So the actual interview was about 15 minutes and we had 
two professors and one student. And it was just the, the normal Kauai dentistry. And they asked a lot about my application specifically, like where I grew up. So I was born in India. So they asked me about my experience moving to America or the North Americans. Um, and they asked me about just like my upbringing or the school I went to, uh, just a lot of things about your application. So I think it was nice that I know that they got to look at my application. They took time to ask me those specific questions. So like I said, for tips, I think just be yourself like everybody says, but that's really important because I think people can tell when you're putting up a front. Um, and it's important to prepare, especially if you're someone that gets nervous, like me, to talk in front of people or in front of an audience. Um, I had a, a Google Doc full of all the questions that I got from multiple sources, and I would just have ready-made or answers typed out, so I don't have to think of them on the spot if, they, if I'm being asked those questions. And I did a lot of practice with my friends. Uh, actually, it was my friends were a big part of me preparing for the interview. It's really important to like talk to people and not just uh, practice on your own. Um, when I couldn't have somebody listen to me, I would record myself on a computer screen and talk to myself through that. That was really helpful. Um, and I think on the on your interview day, just if you're flying, it really helped me that I could get there a little ahead of time. So I got here a day before my interview just so I can get settled in uh, if you're someone that gets nervous with things like that. Um, just, yeah, once you get there, do all the preparation before, but the day of, just, just relax. Just be yourself and just trust that you're prepared and people will see that. And if they saw you, if they're asking you to come in for an interview, that sets you apart from the crowd that's already applied. And on your interview day, everybody's on the same field. So it's important to just... Um, show them you, who you are and why you want to be there. So I kind of applied very late in the cycle. Um, I applied about September, November, which again goes to show that it's never too late, but again, I would not recommend it. I applied kind of closer to the Canadian school's deadlines and just submitted a couple of American applications as well. Um, I didn't, wasn't really expecting to hear much from the cycle, but when I heard from Roseman, I kind of took the chance. And when I interviewed, I actually really liked the school. Like I liked their um, curriculum. Uh, so Rosemont has an interesting system where they only do one course at a time and they get you into clinic pretty early. I think we were in clinic either just assisting or just doing minimal, like maybe like cleanings or scalings and stuff like that in first year. Um, so I think during the interview, Rosemont was, it was a very pleasant environment. The campus was really new compared to other schools that I've seen. And I just kind of felt like I would be happy, especially in Utah because it's so beautiful. Um, so that was kind of the reason I chose Roseman. And the block curriculum, like I mentioned, was probably the biggest plus for me because uh, during my first year, they also suggested that if you, uh, once you finish a course or once you finish the exam, you would get three day weekends, which kind of is changing now because the curriculum is becoming a three year program. But um, that's something that set the school apart for me, and that's why I chose Roseman. So the transition from undergrad to dental school was not as hard as I expected it to be. Um, undergrad, you're really independent, you're kind of on your own. Um, people are doing different things, everyone has different schedules. But in dental school, everybody's in the same boat, everyone's taking the same classes, same exams. Same time off, so that means you get to hang out when you finish something hard. So that was really fun. Um, I honestly enjoyed dental school way more than undergrad. I feel like I was a lot less stressed, which might be specifically because I went to Roseman because of her curriculum. Um, I'm somebody that really enjoys just focusing on one thing, getting it done and moving on. Uh, I have trouble managing multiple different courses, tests and everything like that. So I, I know different schools have different experiences. Um, so the transition was much easier because of our block system and um, overall I feel like I was a mentally really happy. Um, I got time to explore in Utah, there's a lot of outdoors, outdoorsy things to do, a lot of national parks. Um, so the transition wasn't as bad as I was expecting. And I noticed a trend um, in terms of how I felt during dental school. So the first two years everyone was really excited and you're getting to do things that you like you weren't doing before so your confidence is a lot higher i personally found my confident kind of confidence kind of dropped in my third year where i was solely responsible for a patient i was a primary start to finish you know so 
Um, I think the imposter syndrome kind of kicked in towards third and fourth year, but the cure for that is just more practice. Like that's why it's practicing dentistry because even after you graduate, you're still so new that you're just you just have to keep practicing. So. Typically first year is very didactic heavy, like most schools, uh, but we also got to do sim clinic fairly early. We got into clinic or sim clinic uh, end of the first month almost, and then into clinic the end of the first year. Um, we were initially doing simple stuff in clinic or mostly assisting. Um, and then towards third or fourth year, you start to get more autonomy. Or, um, you're like the primary for the patients. I think that was really important to get that clinic experience earlier because it's really important to learn how to talk to patients. Patient management is a really big thing that most people don't understand. And uh, learning how to discuss treatment plans with patients or um, kind of letting them know what's which best treatment to pursue, uh, those soft skills are really important. And I think having that extra time in clinic from first year was made a really big difference in terms of patient care. Um, and I think for didactics, just the fact that we had, um, initially we had the basic dental courses, but then towards the end of our beginning of third year, we took um, a systems courses, which is like the digestive, the respiratory, all the major systems. And that was really helpful because we took it right before we took boards. So it was still fresh in our mind compared to doing it in first year. So I really liked the way that was organized, the, the curriculum. Um, and that really helped us. And we were, most of my class finished boards by the end of third year. Um, and now we just have to focus on licensing. So I think that really was a great way to organize things. So getting to interact with my patients and my team members is kind of what gets me excited to go to school. Uh, it's cheesy to say, but we here at Rosemont have a um, team-based clinic. So we stay, the patients are rotated amongst the team members and then the team members are the same for, throughout the four years. Um, and I was lucky enough to be teamed with my friends from first year, which was, it's so exciting just to go to clinic and work amongst your friends. Um, that's a lot of fun. And also the patient population that we have here um, is sometimes low to moderate socioeconomic status. So they're really grateful for the care that they receive and they travel from a long distance sometimes to come see you. And when you do something that gets them out of pain, they are really happy to show that. Um, it's great getting like little gifts from patients and um, just it's really rewarding when you're able to get them out of pain and um, especially when they really need it and they don't have um, a place else that they can afford uh, so they come to see you so um, that's kind of what gets me out of bed every day and that's really exciting. My biggest piece of advice for pre-dance is stop being scared. Don't let the fear hold you back from actually trying your hardest. It's scary, I know it's uncertain, I've been through the same thing but that's something I regret doing because the fear of not doing well prevented me from trying my hardest because I'm, I was afraid of my DAT is not going well because I'm in midterm. So I'm like, what's the point of studying the hardest? But that's not the way to go. Don't let that hold you back. And like, there's people, let me tell you, there's people that got in after five, six times, seven times of applying to dental school who got in with not the best DAT scores and also who, people who applied late. There's always a chance. And it's also kind of a game of luck. Um, if you're able to show your personality through during the interview and the person likes you, that gets you in. So there's always a chance, so don't be scared to try. And also when you're applying, do things that you love. So if you love doing something unrelated to dentistry, for example, if you really like working with animals, go work with animals because that's gonna show them that you have a passion in something. And if you've done that over a period of time, that's gonna show them that you stick to it or you're committed. So things like that are really important and just, I just wish you the best and I hope you do great in this journey to dentistry. And if you have any questions, uh, please follow me on my Instagram. It's can you handle the tooth? Um, I try to answer people's questions about Rosemann or about just dentistry in general. And we also make fun dance videos with my friends um, and it's on YouTube. The channel is called Dance and Dente. So thank you Future DDS for having me on here. It's been a pleasure. And this is something I wanted to do. I wanted to help people applying to dental school and go through that process because we all understand how stressful that is. So thank you so much for having me on here.